Hello and welcome to our program today. We're delighted that you've joined us. Today we'll continue our series on the letter to the Ephesians by Paul. In the second chapter, a temple features prominently, just like the temple featured prominently in Ephesus. And we'll see how Paul uses that image to encourage the people of Ephesus. I'd like to thank Sue, Sandy, and Catherine for their contributions, and especially our talented music team. Let us pray. All loving God, as we awaken from rest, we feel a pull to move and we feel a pull back to our resting place. That very pull is our inner voice. It is you, God. And sometimes we only hear it when we are quiet. Sometimes we only see you, God, when the setting sun brushes under the horizon, a palette of colors moving from the earth to the heavens. We see you, God. We say it. We own it. We share pictures and are grateful for the tapestry before us. But what if we took a picture of a crowded grocery store and were proud of the gifts before us, of the food that was sent to us, of the food that was grown for us, of the food that was boxed and wrapped for us, of the people that found their way to the store with canvas bags and plastic carry bins. What if we saw God in this moment here too? Why can one scenario be clearly God sent and the other be far removed? We pause in the sunset or in the grocery store and we are grateful that you know us so well and we ask forgiveness for us not knowing you so completely in return with you there is peace and we see it and feel it god we promise to take our next breath and breathe it so deeply that we are here and we are reminded that you are always with us, that you will never leave us. Even if we are driving in our car or back at the grocery store or looking at another sunset, peace begins and ends with you, O oh God. And we are but a vessel to carry your peace and love with us and through us each and every day. Thanks be to God. Amen.
letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. I'm reading from the Message Bible. Listen. But don't take any of this for granted. It was only yesterday that you outsiders to God's ways had no idea of any of this, didn't know the first thing about the way God works, hadn't the faintest idea of Christ. You knew nothing of the rich history of God's covenants and promises in Israel, hadn't a clue about what God was doing in the world at large. Now, because of Christ, dying that death, shedding that blood, you who were once out of it altogether are now in on everything. The Messiah has made things up between us so that we're now together on this, both non-Jewish outsiders and Jewish insiders. He tore down the wall we used to keep each other at a distance. He repealed the law code that had become so clogged with fine print and footnotes that it hindered more than it helped. Then he started over. Instead of continuing with two groups of people separated by centuries of animosity and suspicion, he created a new kind of human being, a fresh start for everybody. Christ brought us together through his death on the cross. The cross got us to embrace, and that was the end of the hostility. Christ came and preached peace to you outsiders and peace to us insiders. He treated us as equals and so made us equals. Through him we both share the same spirit and have equal access to the Father. That's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here, in what he's building. He used the apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God, all of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home. Bless these words to our use and understanding. Thank you, Sue. So, in this chapter of the Ephesians and what we heard today from Sue's reading, Paul talks about the temple. And that temple features pretty prominently in this second chapter. And it should be really no surprise because he's drawing on an image that would be very familiar to the people of Ephesus. Because you see, that temple, the temple of Diana, was set, or Artemis, was center to the economic life and religious life of the people of Ephesus. No matter where they were from, no matter what they believed, that temple in its greatness was the, the center theme or the center building around which Ephesus itself was built. A temple to Artemis existed in Ephesus since the Bronze Age, about 3300 to 1200 BCE. It was destroyed by flooding in the 7th century and rebuilt in 560 BC. And then again, it was destroyed by arson in, 5, in 356 BC. So the final temple was rebuilt in the years following 523. And so by the time that Paul arrives in Ephesus, that temple is, the new temple is 400 years old, but a temple existed there for thousands of years. So that temple was center to the town or city of Ephesus for thousands of years. Think about that. It's that sense of grounding. It's a sense of peace. It's a sense of knowing that there is always going to be something there. So it was the center of religion. It was the center of commerce. In fact, some believe that it was a kind of bank where people kept things. It was also a center of economy and a center of economic, uh, I mean, of civic life. Festivals surrounded that building. And so we have that sense of constancy, that sense of peace in that building. It was known, it was renowned as one of the seven ancient wonders of the world. Indeed, Antipater of Sidon, a Greek uh, poet of the second half of the, of the second century BC, in his writings listed all the seven wonders and then ends with this description of the temple, which he says is greater than all the other six, greater than the gardens of Babylon, greater than the uh, great pyramids of Egypt. In fact, in his mind, the only thing more magnificent is Mount Olympus. As I mentioned, that temple had been 220 years in building. It covered almost two football fields, over 100,000 square feet. 
It was roof was supported by a hundred and twenty six columns, each sixty feet high. Imagine that sixty feet, a hundred and twenty six columns, and the columns were made of blocks of white marble, and were gifts of the kings of the world. At the center was the statue of Artemis, which was made of wood, which provided this great contrast between the weight and color of the marble around it and the statue itself, which would have been lighter and a different color. The Ephesians believed Artemis to be the goddess of fertility and prosperity, and certainly that temple and its location, the fact that Ephesus was on these trade routes, made it feel like she was, or that it was, contrib con was contributing to their success. So you see here we have this temple, and each stone in the temple is important. And each stone is placed in um, relation to one particular stone, and that's the cornerstone. So the cornerstone guides the placement of each stone that creates the unity of this building, that creates the weight of this building and the permanence of this building in which this presence that supposedly brings prosperity and peace to the world lives. So you can see how Paul has a natural attraction to this particular vision, to this temple. But for him, the temple is spiritual. That even this great temple that has lasted for thousands of years is only temporary. And for him, the temple that is really important is that the temple of people, the followers of Jesus, the followers of the teaching of Jesus. And so he talks about Jesus as the cornerstone, Christ as the cornerstone, the, 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 the rock that gives direction to the placement of each and every block within that temple. The foundation of that temple are the teachings and the wisdom of God as revealed through the prophets and through the teachings that we find in the Bible and the life story of Jesus. And so we build on those life stories. We are guided by the direction of that cornerstone in our lives. And so we build these temples of people, living temples, where everyone is important. Paul talks about just like Ephesus was a cosmopolitan city of people from all over the world gathering together to deal with the, their own econ economic lives, religious lives, and home lives, the temple of God is a place where all people can gather. There is no one who's set apart. There's no differences anymore. Gentile, Jew, it doesn't matter. It's all the love of God has flowed out to everyone and draws everyone into this great temple of people where people have a home, where God and God's love is at home. So you see, each one of us is important in the life of the world. Each one of us is important in the life of our community. Everyone is important, no matter where they came from, no matter what they've done, no matter their history, no matter their, their parentage, no matter their race. Everyone is important in the building of God's temple in the world, the place that is home to God and home to one another, home to the whole of creation. As we follow the wisdom and guidance of that foundation and direct our lives according to that cornerstone, Jesus' life and teachings, we will build a temple for the future that even is more beautiful than the temple of Artemis, which we no longer have. In fact, it's been taken apart and put in some museum. All that's left there now is one column. And yet here, this temple of God, as it has grown over the centuries, as we begin to see what it really means as we stretch our minds and open our minds to its wisdom and begin to see how important all people are, and how we need to reach out and care for the vulnerable, because they are just as much important to this temple as anyone else. There are no divisions. There are no walls that divide us, no, no theologies that divide us, no ideas that should divide us. But we are all one creation, 
We are all one part of the web of life in which God calls us, and God lives in the wisdom as it's lived out in our lives and the lives around us. That's the message of Paul today. That's the message of this chapter of Ephesians, the living temple, a temple dedicated to love and peace in the world, and that stretches far beyond the bounds of one city or one country, but reaches around throughout the world, reaches out to every living thing, reaches out even to the care of creation itself. That's what we are called to. That's the kind of life that that cornerstone is calling us to. And we are learning every day more and more about what that call is about. As we begin to reach out to the lost people, to the vulnerable, to the marginalized, and bring them in as part of an important part of the temple of God. Loving God, we give you thanks for the life you've given us, for the communities in which you've set us, for the churches that support us and help us to find ways of faith and to guide our lives. We pray that we would be open to your word and that you would indeed enlighten our hearts and our minds with your wisdom into how we should live in this world, creating a place that brings about your peace, your presence, your light. We give you thanks for the creation that surrounds us and help us to love it as you love it and be good stewards of it, caring for it for the future. We pray for frontline workers, for those who are administering vaccines and those caring for the sick. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, that you would comfort them with their memories and with the hope that is in you. We pray for those who seek healing, those going through difficult times, those undergoing medical procedures, or even those who convalesce at home. We pray for Roma, Sandra, Carla, K 
Karen, Rob, Catherine, Jerry, Betty, Gwen, Rena, and Ray, and those whom we name now in the silence. May they know the love that enfolds them from those around them. Grant wisdom and understanding to all their caregivers. We give thanks for the blessing of everyone gathered and watching this program. We give you thanks that we are all part of your living temple, whose life and direction is based on your love and wisdom as revealed in the life of Jesus, a temple that is both home to you and to us. May the light of creation continue to shine upon and through us, and may love envelop each one of us. May our lives be enlightened by the light that shines through others to us. May we continue to grow in the awareness of the profound depth of love that surrounds and supports us and the whole of creation. May the pure light within each one of us guide us. May we be blessed, encouraged, and empowered in every aspect of our lives. Hear our prayers with the prayers of your whole creation through Christ as we pray in the spirit of St. Francis. As I live every day, I want to be a channel for peace. May I bring love where there is hatred and healing where there is hurt, joy where there is sadness and hope where there is fear. I pray that I may always try to understand and comfort other people as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, may I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need, and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Remember to like and subscribe our programs. When you subscribe, you'll receive notification when our next program is uploaded. If you'd like to make a donation to support the Ministry of St. John's, information on how to do that is featured below in our description box. As we go into the world today, let's think about how we are part of the communities in which we exist, that we are an important part and people around us are important parts of our families, our churches, and our wider community. And we go into the world knowing that we are surrounded by the love of God and that that special love is for each and every one of us. We go knowing that the Spirit dwells within each one of us to inspire and empower us and we have Jesus, that chief cornerstone, as a guide and direction in our lives. Amen.